Hey there, rock and roll junkies. Charlie here with another Grey Wolf review. This episode, Venom with their album, Black Metal. Now, the first time I heard Venom, I'm gonna tell you, I did not like what I heard. I listened to a little bit from Welcome to Hell and a little bit of Black Metal, just little things, and I didn't like what I heard. The like, thing was, I couldn't get past the bad production on either album. So I really didn't get into them until recently, like in the last year. When I first heard them was like years ago, and I just, those songs that I heard, I could not get past the bad production. But I did like a few things. I did like a few songs. I just didn't bother to look into them. But now, in the last two, I've looked into the first three albums, and I've learned to look past the bad production, and I really like those albums. The first three at least. And in this episode, Black Metal. So Black Metal was released November 1st, 1982. So let's get into the first song, which is Black Metal. Now this song, as I said, I did not like it at first. It had uh, bad production, but here's the thing with Venom. That's kind of the point. They, they wanted to have, they wanted to be like raw, and the bad production added to that element. You know, what I really like about, uh, this song, the intro, the intro sounds like a saw, I don't know what it is. The intro sounds like a saw, I don't know what that is, that, that sound in the beginning, but I really like it. It's really in your face, the drums and the guitar are just so fast. The bass, however, is just a little, just a little bit low in the mix. I didn't like Kronos' singing style, the first time I heard this. I didn't... I just, I didn't feel the energy coming from him. It just felt kind of like flat at first, but then I kind of just, as I was listening to the album more and more, I, I learned to enjoy it. And I really like his singing on this. Because I look, I saw some live versions of these songs and I just thought he did these songs better live than on the album. I love the solo on this song. I love the chorus, it's very classic again. Classic solo solo and classic chorus. The ending, I love the ending, man. It's just so fierce. It's just like, uh, uh, it just ends like that. I just love that the snarling and the growling. It's just great. It's very straight to the point. The song is just very high energy. I love this song. So let's move on to the next song, which is To Hell and Back. Now this song keeps up the speed from the last song. It's very metal. The solo here has, um, I don't know what to say, it kind of like a gypsy vibe, the, the solo here. I really like it, it's real loud, it's, it has this chaotic ending, it just ends. These songs are very straight to the point, as I said, they're, very, they're kind of short, and that's what I like about them. Very, very good song. Let's move on to number three, which is Buried Alive. Um, the voice, the, little, the voice in the beginning, I'm not a big fan of. I feel like they do without that voice. It, it kind of sounds like he's yawning, like, oh, okay. and I don't, I don't really like that. It just comes off a bit, a bit silly. I enjoy the digging noises though, like they're digging a grave. I like that, the effects there. The breathing is really cool. Like when he's breathing, like, it's so cool. I, I love that. And then it begins with like this guitar. It's like very ominous sounding guitar. And then Kronos comes in like with this whispering vocals. And it just sounds so evil. You know what he's saying? I just love it. His performance here is just perfect. It's just perfect. I've never had a problem with Kronos' voice on this song. I just thought it was perfect first time I heard it. And the bass on this song is a bit more audible than the last one, which I love. And the bass here, just overall, I just think the bass is like beautiful. I think it's quite beautiful here, the bass. That's you know, the word that came to mind <laughs> on this song is just beautiful. And I love it. The song is pretty slow for the most part. It's not like a fast paced song, but it's, it has, you know, a pretty groovy solo, which I just love this song. So let's move on to number four, which is Raise the Dead. And this one picks up the speed a bit faster than the last one. I believe it to be a continuation of the last song, uh, thematically or lyrically. Uh, the classic solo here, very like classic like 70 heavy metal, uh, hard rock type of solo you hear in, on this one. Great song, it's just a very great song. That's all I can say about this one. Let's move on to number five, which is Teacher's Pet. And this song, at first I didn't like it. 
I found it a bit too silly. I couldn't really take it seriously. It, the song, honestly, sticks out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of the album. And now I like it a little bit more, but I still don't love it. I would prefer they would take it off the album. Some people might really be a big fan of this one, but I'm, I'm not. I feel the vocals are a little bit drowned out by the instruments on this song. And, ugh. Okay, one thing I will say, I like the solo. It has like a very bluesy type solo, which surprised me because this album kind of expect like speed metal type solos maybe, and then this blues type solo comes out. And I really liked it though. The bass is great here. The chanting, you know, there's like this chanting and then it goes back into the speed near the middle and it's I, overall, I like the musical choices for the song, you know, what they decided to do with it, but for the most part, I don't, this song is just, it's, it's too silly for me to fully appreciate it, just with the rest of this album. It just sticks out and it just, it's kind of like really weird choice, really weird. I made, the first thing I thought of was uh, Van Halen's Hot for Teacher. You know, it's just imagine like you're listening to an album that's like really serious and the Hot for Teacher just comes out of nowhere. That's what I feel about this song. I don't think it's bad though. So let's move on to the next one, which is Leave Me In Hell. Chrono sounds real good here, real evil. His voice is just real raspy. I just love it. This one reminds me a lot of uh, Motorhead. A lot of songs of Venom remind me of Motorhead, but this one a lot. Uh, I love the sound of the bass near the middle. Great. I think, it, you know, the bass melds really good with the solo. So it was fantastic, and then this song, you know, ends and then just just fades away. This is a great song, very classic, kind of uh, speed metal type song, like Motorhead esque. Let's move on to the next one, which is Sacrifice. I love this song, man. The chorus is catchy as all hell. I love it. The whole band flows so well in this song. I think this might be the best produced song of the album because you hear just everything perfectly on this song. It's very raw and crunchy. It's just ooh, so good. The solo is very subtle. It's kind of Motorhead-esque again. And then the scream at the end is just perfect. I think this might just be my, might be my favorite song. Might be my favorite. Again, I'm gonna say the chorus is great, how it spells it. S-A-C-R-F-I-C-E. -I, -I, I think I did that wrong, but I just love it. So good, it's so fun to sing along to. Move on to the next one, which is Heaven's on Fire! Great intro scream again. Guitars are real fast. It's very chaotic. It's all over the place. I love the speed of the guitar solo on this. Chronos is kind of like speed singing here, kind of like speed talking. It's I just love it. I just love everything that's going on in this one. Great song. Let's move on to the next one, which is Countess Bathory. This song hooks you right from the intro. The drums, great drums. Everything are real clear here. You know, one of the better produced songs on the album. Kronos' voice here is just so raw, especially on the chorus. It's just perfect. The bass is the bass is fantastic, but the bass, you gotta hear this to the bass near the end of the song. Oh my god, it's so good. It's this song is just a complete highlight of the album, I think. This is one of the best things. Venom has ever done. I just love this song and the guitar solo is fantastic. Fantastic song. Let's move on to the next. Number 10, Don't Burn the Witch. Musically, or should I say sonically, this one reminds me a lot of um, Welcome to Hell. The song Welcome to Hell. It might just be just me, but it just kind of reminds me of that one. It kind of sounds similar. But, you know, the song is really fierce throughout, all around. Kronos sounds great again. This might be my favorite solo on the album. This song contains my favorite solo. It's very just blistering solo. I love it. I feel the song just, you know, it ends on a very high note. With the whole band. It's very, very strong finish. Which makes me question the next track. Because I feel like this song should have ended the album. By all means, this should be the end of the album, but we know we have an 11th track, which is At War With Satan Preview. Um, my first thing here is, 
Why? Why is this here? I mean, okay, look, let's, this song is real evil. It's really cool. It's like spoken word. Uh, it has like this plotting riff, which I love. But again, why? I mean, look, this song hypes you up and then ends. It's, it's that being said, it's not really a song. Again, it's a preview. It's like putting a trailer at the end of their album for their next album. And I get it to create hype, but why? You know? Because now that the next album is already out and it's been out for like decades, this song really has no purpose, no point. And it just leaves me with mixed feelings. I don't know what to feel here. Like, I really like this, but this is like, again, like a, like a, it's in the name, it's a preview, it's like a trailer. I don't, I don't know what to feel. I don't know if I should not like this or like this. I'm kind of like bothered that it's here. That being said, it is good song, because it's not really a song. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say with that one, because I really don't know what to say. Tell me your thoughts on I wore a Satan preview, but if you actually like it being there, if you actually listen to it, like this specific version of it, ever when you listen to this album, I wanna know. But that being said, let me just wrap up the album. This album is very like important for like heavy metal history. It's a very big album. You know, of course the cover is really famous. And this band is really like famous when it comes to I guess proto thrash, proto black metal. This album, the album's called Black Metal. A lot of people call Venom like a pioneer for black metal. And, uh, I mean, thematically maybe. See, I've always had a problem with calling Venom Black Metal. Uh, to me, it'd be like speed metal or blackened proto thrash metal. Like very, just imagine Motorhead, just a little bit more, a little bit more. You know, because I mean, it's basically very similar to Motorhead, just a little bit more made me evil esque. It's not exactly thrash, it's not exactly not, and it's not exactly black, it's not black metal at all. One thing I have to say black metal, this album has very, has a, it doesn't have the best production, which makes me think that look, a lot of the early black metal bands don't have good production at all, which is my thing against black metal, that I don't, I don't like the bad production. And I'm starting to think that maybe this album inspired it. Like, it's like, oh man, we gotta be like Venom. We gotta make our album sound terrible. Like, like them. Because, you know, they sound raw. They sound metal. And I, maybe, like, this band did it. Maybe because they couldn't afford better production. Or they just wanted to sound raw. But it kind of bothers me that it basically enabled all of those other bands to do the same. It's kind of like a crutch. Like, I really, it bothers me. The black metal production. There's a lot of black metal that took me a long time to get into because of the bad production. That being said, it's a really good album for just heavy metal. It's a great album. It's not overrated at all. I think this band is kind of overlooked sometimes. Sometimes. Like people just say, oh, Venom are great, but do you know why they're great? Have you listened to black metal? Just track by track and actually see what they're doing there. They're doing a lot of things there. A lot of people said they weren't that good live. I've seen some footage live. You know, the, per the point is they delivered a performance, that they performed, that uh, entertained you. And I was entertained when I saw the performance of them playing live. I think they're a great band. I love this album. And, you know, I've gotten past the bad production and I can appreciate it for what it is. I think it's a great album. Highly recommend it. If you haven't heard it, hear it. You'll love Venom. Hear the other stuff. And I guess that concludes this episode, guys, of Venom's Black Metal. All right, so it's now my pick of the vid for my pick. Album recommendation, I recommend the album. Portrait by King Diamond, the first King Diamond album. King Diamond, as you know, and Merciful Fate also kind of helped you know, pioneer the early proto black metal. So that's my recommendation for you guys. If you haven't heard it, hear it. If you have, hear it again. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to stay metal, stay devil, stay evil. All right.